Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Before we start, I just want to say thank you to the guys who are picking up my merch. Really cool to imagine some people walking around with the, with my merchandise. We've got a real flow squad going on here, which is really cool. Anyway, in this episode, we're going to discuss something I alluded to in one of my previous episodes when I talked about my new favorite custom code solution, Slater which is great, by the way, you should go check that episode out. You should check the app out. It's really, really cool. But in this episode, we're going to talk about in the use case in which you want to write your own code locally, uh, whether you're building a library or you just prefer that way of working in VS Code. And the best way to do that is to run it locally on your machine as a server and have your Webflow website pick that up. And that's a really good development workflow, really, really fast. It means you don't have to publish your Webflow website. So we're gonna dip into that today and uh, hopefully you'll learn a thing or two and you'll enjoy this one. So let's get stuck in. Cool, so what I've got here is basically an open folder ready for me to take charge. So first thing we wanna do is with our terminal open, I'm gonna init this as an NPM pro project. And yeah, all this is fine. Um, leave it as it is. I'm not too bothered about that. Okay, so we've initialized our project as an NPM project. That means we can install packages. And the first one we're going to want to install is Webpack. And let's do let's do Webpack and Webpack CLI in case we need it. And this is going to be the core of our project. Inside of this, let's just do it while it's waiting. We're going to do uh, we're going to create a Webpack dot config dot js file and in this i'm going to copy some thing and we're going to explain some of this stuff here we're going to remove that because that's for my old project just a quick description on webpack webpack takes all of your javascript files and bundles them together it means you can organize and separate all your files rather than having to write them all in one file it does a whole bunch of other things you can transform things and whatever but for our basic use case we're just going to use it to package up all of our javascript and deliver it as one JavaScript file or separate JavaScript files, which we'll come to understand in a bit. So what we're doing, we're setting the mode to production. This means it's going to minify. And again, you can have non-minified and minified version depending on dev and staging and all the rest of it. But we're just trying to keep it simple. We're going to minify it. And we're telling this entry thing is telling it what file to take and where to put it. And you can see that we're already sort of, I've already defined a bit of a structure here. So let's just do that. Let's go. Let's go source.index.js, okay? Let's already create that. Go back to here. Then we've got output here. And where are we gonna, where are we gonna output that to? And we're putting it to a dist folder, a distribution folder, basically. That's what that's sort of short for. And we're gonna name it whatever the name is placed inside of this file. We could hard code that, but given that we wanna do multiple files, we're just gonna take the name of the current file. Name uh, the library no idea what that is to be honest and this is just a way of how it's going to package all those files up and we're going to want usd und sorry and then all the rest of it we're just going to leave as that so do copy that i'll leave a little uh, paste bin uh, in the thing below but just know that's what we're going to need and we're going to edit this in a little bit so the next thing we're going to want to do is set up a bunch of scripts that run based on what we type so a common one is start um, or dev here. And this these run when you type npm run uh, dev, or npm start is a built-in one, so we can just type npm start, paste those in. So these are the two commands we care about. Dev is gonna be the one that bundles up all of our code, but whenever we change a file. So great for development purposes that when we re whenever we save a file, it'll bundle it up and it will be immediately available inside of Webflow. Start is more of a packaging thing and we won't be using that in this instance. I mean, that's kind of beyond the scope of the tutorial, but let's just get through uh, getting something up and running. So we're just gonna run, we're just gonna work with the, with the dev command here. And let's just run that now, npm run dev and see what happens. Uh, missing scripts, so I'm saved it. npm run dev. So that's watching and it should have built a dist folder and there's our global thing. And it's, it's got a load of other junk in there and you don't need to worry about that, but that is essentially taking this file and putting it inside of that. So let's just start with a simple console log 
hello from index.js. Save that, and immediately we should see it. There we go, there it is, and that's that. So how do we get this now inside of Webflow? If I split my terminal here, what we want to do is serve it, like run it on a local server so it's accessible on our machine from anywhere on our machine. This would, uh, in a later date, be an online link, and you'll have to change that in time. But during development, this is kind of what you'll do. So we're not going to install anything. We're just going to use MPF, and we're going to serve that distribution folder. And that's going to create a local server for us at localhost 3000. If I click that, open it up, you'll see our global.js, and that gives us access to that file. And I'm going to copy that uh, because if we go into Webflow here, I've got a test page set up. And going down here, we're just going to put a script tag source equals, and then we're going to paste in that link. And if I publish this and load up our page, you'll see, hello, I don't know why it's doing it twice, to be honest. Uh, maybe there's something going on there. But ultimately, we have our JavaScript running. And I could take that index file and write some JavaScript in there. So from uh, Hello Wombats, cool. So it fades in. So given that this is called global, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. We're going to have one JavaScript that runs on every page that you'll include in the custom code uh, footer section of of the whole entire site, and then you're probably going to want individual JavaScript files that run on specific pages. So let's just set that up. So we've got our global one here that just takes that. I mean, it's an awful bit of code because it only is specific to the Hello Wombats. But for argument's sake, just bear with me. In fact, let's cut that console log hello from global. Let's create a new file and then call it this is called test page. So let's go. Let's do test page .js. We created our thing and we've written our code that's specific to that page. Now in our package J, oh sorry, in our webpack config, we're gonna wanna name this file or we're gonna pay reference to the file, output it as a separate file to the global file, okay? Now we're gonna need to restart our webpack so it picks up that new file and you know creates this distribution file. As you can see, We've got our Hello Wombat. So we've got a global file that we're going to include on every single page. And then in our inside of here, we're going to want to pay reference to um, script. In fact, let's just, let's go back here, refresh this. You can now see our test page. So I'm just going to copy that for ease. Script source. Cool. Save, publish. So if I refresh this now, we should see hello from global, and also we should see our hello wombats fade in, which is the individual file that's only loaded, that we've only chosen to load on this page. Theoretically, we could put it on any page, but for argument's sake, we're only loading this on this page. And the wonderful thing about this now is that I can change my files, save it, it will regenerate, and I can go back into my page and refresh and I'm going to have to publish Webflow or anything like that. So it's a really handy, really fast way of developing JavaScript. There is one other aspect to all this, which so far I've shown you kind of a global JavaScript file and then JavaScript files for individual pages. But what if you want to organize your code a bit more and just basically separate all of your JavaScript files just from an organizational perspective? For instance, what if you wanted a helper function that just helps you add two functions together, and you want to include that in a file, or you want to include that specific function in multiple files. That's what I'm going to show you quickly right now. So let's just start with a um, helpers uh, JavaScript file here. And the secret to all this is to make this file importable, if that makes sense, if that's even a word. So the way to do that is with 
exports and you type exports and then dot and you give it a name. If you want to export the whole entire file, again, just from an organizational perspective, say you've written a whole bunch of code that you just want to export it, then defaults uh, defaults is the one you're gonna you're gonna do use and it's gonna be a function okay and then you're just gonna write your code inside of this it could be a, some GSAP stuff it could be some more sort of functions here or there um, it could be a bunch of stuff and the idea is that you just want to organize this code in its own little, it could be a small, the smaller the better really, but it could be its own little small file that you want to say, hey, I don't want this to, I just want this to exist in its own uh, file. Then in the pages that you want to include it, really, you know, ideally you'd include it in just one, you literally just require that file so helpers as an example we just require that and what we're going to do take a look into where do we import it we import it into test page and then this is going to do all that magic of returning that um, gsap so you can see two gsap codes there sorry so one is from the test page.js and then the other one is from the helpers.js so that's kind of importing another file into another one Actually, just to get this method working, you need to add defaults and then call the actual function so it's not automatically imported. Then you'd have just a bunch of these, basically. Then the other aspect is, what about individual functions? You can add multiple exports to this file. And so this is literally, hello world, uh, return A plus B, and then it accepts A and B there, and it just returns the sum of these two numbers, right? And we can access that. Let's put it in helpers right now. Um, you import, open the brackets, and then hello, what do we call it? Hello world from helpers. Let's go hello. Well, these are terrible names, by the way. Obviously, this would be like sum, so it would be one and two. So this would actually return. Uh, three. So if we save that, go into global, and there's our function there because we're actually using it. It does a lot of um, cleanup for us as well, and everything's compiled successfully. So you can see that I've imported a specific function. This and and helpers is a perfect use case. You might have loads of helper functions, and I've imported it into the file that I want to use it. So there's a couple of different use cases there. Um, to just bundle everything up and keep everything organized. So that will do it. Really quickly tutorial. I've got another episode on actually where to upload it, whether it's a paid for service or you're building your own. So I'll link those below as well. Also, take a look at Slater because it's amazing. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then smash the like button. If you want to hear more about this sort of stuff, uh, no code tools such as Webflow, then hit the subscribe. It really helps a lot. And before you go, I'm excited to announce that we've opened up the Twitter or X community for Webflow and code. This means we're going to be closing down the Discord server. I've kind of always struggled to really place that. I think it's too broad and too complicated. So we're going to streamline the discussion over on the X community. So give me a follow at Fake Sam Gregory, and I'll see you in the discussion over there. And YouTube will do its recommendation thing for you guys in three, two, one.